The inherent need to create things, to leave a legacy, is something that is a driving force ingrained in all of us. Filmmaking for me has always been a passion and a lifeblood. How you tell a story, how you shape the way the viewer feels and experiences that, is just as important as the story itself. This is what that looks like. What's up guys, today's video is going to be a little bit different. Um, today I'm talking about the Dehancer plugin for Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, and DaVinci Resolve, and my thoughts about the software after having used it for about a month or two. It's essentially a film conversion plugin for those video editing programs to give your films more of a cinematic look, apply grain, apply film profiles, film stocks, and just any other sort of looks that you're kind of going for to give your films more of a nostalgic sort of cinematic vibe to them. Essentially, I'd been looking for something like this for a long time, probably the past couple years. I've been trying different products and different, um, different programs, different overlays and LUTs, and essentially I just never found anything that really suited my needs specifically, and I had seen their product before. They did give me a one month license to try the software and give an honest opinion of what I thought about it, but they didn't pay me for the video or um, influence the video in any other way outside of giving me the license. They did provide me with an affiliate link as well. If you are interested in purchasing the software, you can use the code 860BRIAN and get 10% off your order from their website if it's something you're looking at purchasing and that does help me out a little bit. Dehancer reached out to me about two months ago and found my YouTube channel and was wondering if I'd want to make a sort of review video collaboration with them. Um, the setup process is pretty straightforward. You just download the plugin, install it into Final Cut, and then enter your software license key and it pretty much just works right off the bat. There's not really too much um, setup to do. You do have to download the film profiles, but it's just a one-click button. Download the film profiles and then just start using it. I did find that you had to download the profiles and then restart Final Cut Pro and just close out of it and reload it so that to get them to show up in the software but outside of that it was basically seamless setting it up. Alright so I've loaded up Final Cut Pro with the Dehancer plugin into the computer and I'm just gonna kind of go over essentially some of the features of the software, um, some of the profiles that you can get, the basically just walking you through sort of what I've used it for to this point actually working on the project that this video is going to be in. So just bringing this up on the computer, um, I'll turn this off for now. So I have a drone shot that I filmed last a couple weeks ago. Um, it's actually incorporated into the video itself, but I figured it'd be a good example of um, what the software can kind of do. I didn't really do too much comparison with different clips because, again, there's a free trial you can download, you can kind of mess around with this yourself. This is just my opinion of what I think of the software um, and what I'm using it for in my specific use. Um, yours might be a little bit different, but how I found it to be another effective tool in my sort of editing arsenal that has helped enhance my films and give everything a bit more of a natural look that I kind of like to strive for, especially in my wedding films. 
So we've got that clip pulled up on Final Cut in the timeline with the Dehancer plugin on top of it. Um, as you can see, it's sort of already applied a film profile and a print profile, I believe. So the print's still linear. Um, I didn't really get into the nitty gritty of what all these terms mean when I was grading the original clips um, and looking at the software, but what I really enjoyed playing around with and I think what the selling point of the software was was the profiles, the film profiles. If you see here, there are just over 60 different film profiles to choose from right off the bat once you load the software up. So you have your Ilford HP5+, Plus, which is black and white, obviously. Um, you have Cinestill 800T, you've got Fujicolor 100, um, Instax Fujifilm. Um, these are all going to look differently. They're kind of, I would consider to be sort of like applying a lot to footage, but not completely because what I noticed is each one does something a little bit differently to the footage itself um, outside of just a generic over overlay, essentially. Um, we'll go Superior 1000, 1600. Um, like I said, just tons of film, film profiles to, to choose from for your specific look that you're going for. I think for this one, we'll just stick with the Kodak Gold 200. Um, expand, I don't know exactly what that does. I didn't really see it changing too much, turning it on and off. Um, the print section is pretty interesting because you can kind of choose like a, like a, a stock film photo print that, you're, that, the, that would sort of emulate what the footage would look like if it was printed on this paper, I guess, is what the sort of gist of that was that I understood. Um, I'll set this up for the Kodak 2383 print film. Uh, moving down a little bit, we've got the film grain, like I said before. Um, there's different um, sizes of film stocks to choose from, so your 8mm is going to give you a very grainy, um, very grainy image um, to sort of work. It, it's really going to add a lot of grain, essentially, because it's emulating an 8mm film. And then if you move up to 35, ISO 250, um, less grainy, but there's a lot more finer grain. Um, so you can really get specific with the amount of grain that you're wanting to add into your video. And you can adjust that all the way down from the film size from 8mm to 65mm. And you can even bring up the ISO from 50 to 500 on each one of those respectively. Uh, moving down again to sort of going over to film halation. This is the one that I really liked a lot and it's kind of hard to show on here. I have some clips that I'll show you, um, but it basically in in these areas over here, like you can see where the boat is and where the car is and sort of anything that has like edges to it, it adds like this red sort of glow around it. But what I really liked about it was that it's not overdone and it's not just applying it generically to the entire clip like a lot of the LUTs and overlays that I've purchased over the years it just adds it just overlays um, the grain or whatever the sort of like glow effect it just overlays it on top of the footage itself and it's kind of generic what I liked about this specifically was that it seems like it's adding the effect naturally that it would have occurred had you shot on this on film um, I'm not exactly sure how it's doing it, but it's taking, it's applying it naturally to the footage organically from what it looks like at least where it doesn't look like it's over-processed or, or artificial actually looks like it was shot on film. Go down to bloom, that sort of adds like a, I guess like a bloom effect to highlighted areas. Again, you have your 65 millimeter, eight millimeter and 16 and 35 millimeter film options for most of the effects that I've seen um, on the plugin. Even to go down to specifically uh, no remjet, which is basically the, I think from what I understand is the backing of the film. Um, so that's removed and it adds, it kind of adds a bit more. Um, it, 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 it enhances the effect of the halation essentially without the remjet layer being there. Um, film damage and film breath and the gate weave are more so effects for on the film itself. It's not something I would necessarily use on a regular basis, but 
The film damage is what you think it is. It's basically kind of adds that cracked, um, like the film's damaged essentially. So it's more of an effect than it is a tool. I would say for me personally, the film breath and the gate weave is again, I think that jitter that you see on some of, um, like not on, on real film and the sort of randomization of the film jumping around while it's on the spool. Um, then all the way down at the bottom, you have um, your vignetting, obviously, which is, you know, what it says it does. I would say that I wouldn't use vignetting often on a film, but again, it adds, it's another tool that you have at your disposal to um, add a mood or, or add an effect to, to your video. Um, all the way at the bottom, again, you have your monitor, which, um, helps checking for false colors and those sort of things and the clipping indication um, for highlight clipping which I think is another useful tool to have built into the software then you have your output um, which you can change just com basically change how much of the effects that you've put in completely um, are going to affect the original clip so you can bring that to zero to turn it off or you only apply half of it or so and so up to 100% then you have the LUT generator, which is really nice because you can take any effects that you've made in the plugin itself, which I think this is probably one of the top selling points of the software, is that you can take anything that you made in the plugin itself, export that as a LUT to apply to future projects or to even put into your camera to shoot if you're shooting on a monitor. Outside of adding all these, so, so I've kind of gone through some of the ins and outs of the plugin itself um, and what the sort of what the plugin looks like when you load it into Final Cut. Um, it's super easy to use. Essentially, you're just checking off boxes, enabling, disabling certain aspects of the plugin and then messing around with the different settings for the grain, the halation, the bloom and those sort of things. Um, and then super easy to turn that on and off to get it back and forth with what your original clip looked like. It doesn't seem to lag too much for me. Um, sometimes the effects can lag a little bit. Um, I'm, this is an M3 MacBook Pro that I'm working on right now. I have found that sometimes if you apply too many um, of the effects to the clip, like anything, it's gonna slow everything down, but you can render out the clip that you're working on and that usually fixes the issue. Um, even just replaying the clip a couple times, it seems like that normally took away that um, lag that I was getting from the effects on the plugin, but it's in no way unusable by any means. Just going over their website real quick, um, if you're interested in purchasing the software, like I said, you can use the code 860BRIAN to get 10% off of your purchase, and that does help me out just a little bit. Um, that's sort of an affiliate link. If you go to dehancer.com and go over to where it says video, you'll see basically the whole plugin, um, this is for DaVinci Resolve, you have to select up here, so we're on Final Cut Pro. And basically it kind of just gives you an idea of everything that I just went over. Um, they do support a lot of different cameras for log options. Um, I can jump back over here real quick. I think if you go into camera vendor, they've got most major camera manufacturers, um, Sony, Fujifilm, I think my X-H2S, the X-T3. Um, for Sony, you've got most of their cinema cameras and their A-line, um, Canon, you've got the C200, C70, the R5, so huge support for log conversion directly in the, the app itself, which is super helpful instead of running a LUT and then applying this, you can do everything from this program directly, which is super, super easy for workflow. It does kind of break down everything on the website that the that are included in the pro version of the plugin and interestingly enough they do sell the separate plugins um, individually if you just wanted per se to use the grain plugin if you just wanted the bloom plugin or if you were just looking for the halation um, you can just purchase that as its own standalone plugin and if you're really just looking for something to do on say one project or on one film you can just buy a three-month license and you can use that 10 percent code on the three-month license as well they do have a free um monitor and false color tool which is kind of nice if you just need those specifically those are free super easy to download the free trial and load that right into final cut i had this going basically within a few minutes after 
They reached out to me and tried the free trial with the watermark and it doesn't really affect anything with how the software works. Um, so if you're on the fence about it, download the free trial, see for yourself. Um, it's, it's super easy to use. And then if you do decide you want to purchase, make sure you use that code for 10% off 860 Brian. I'll link that below. Um, and get 10% off your purchase. I think what really shines through is that you can see that Dehancer has really put a lot of time and energy into recreating these film profiles um, specifically because after reviewing all over 60 of these to some extent, they're very true to what you'd expect those films to behave like in real life if you were shooting on these film stocks. I absolutely love the software. I think that it has a practical point in my wedding films. I think the grain and the halation effect alone for me are the top two that I'm going to be using in it. The film profiles are super easy to use, so just load those up. Um, I really don't have anything bad to say about it. I think it was something I've been looking into for a while, and they sort of just reached out to me at the right time to try this software out, and I would absolutely recommend it for anybody who's looking for a sort of natural, easier way to create a more cinematic and nostalgic feel in your films if that's the kind of vibe you're going for and just want to have a way to apply it naturally without too much hassle with using different plugins and LUTs where everything's just baked into this one program essentially. I'm probably going to wrap up the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you have any questions feel free to drop a comment below or shoot me a message on Instagram. Again, if you want to get 10% off if you're thinking of purchasing this software use the code 860BRIAN you'll get 10% off your purchase and again that does help me out a little bit. So yeah, get out and shoot something and just make something and have fun doing it. I think that's something I need to remind myself of to do more is to just make something, shoot something, and I, this sort of reignited the passion for filming and shooting different things and just making stuff that I enjoy making. So hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.